Hi all, I have an exceptionally beautiful bullet chess game to show you today. Magnus Carlsen was playing uh, under the nickname Dr. Nicktestein, and this was against Blue Green Sun. This was in the titled arena at Lee Chess in June 2019. So every round uh, is a titled player. I played in it a few times, great fun. G4 for Magnus, the first surprise, the Grob. So Michael Basman would be uh, proud that the Grob is being used. Uh, so E5, we have D4, E takes, Knight F3. So a temporary pawn sacrifice. And in fact, well, it becomes a real pawn sack now after C3. D takes, Knight takes C3. So White has dynamic compensation for the pawn, a lead in development. Nice control over the D5 square. Sometimes in the Grob, the D5 square is very, very important. The Grob G5 can sometimes restrict a natural Knight F6 and help that fight for that D5 square. So we have here D6, and in fact, G5 immediately. Slight downsides, sometimes uh, the light squares could be weak, but also this G4 is prone sometimes in the Grob to uh, maneuvers like this where the dark squares could be emphasized like f4 and h4 in theory depending on the positions uh, so knight c6 was played here if bishop g4 it seems as though bishop f4 is quite nice uh, this is disrupting development and d6 is liability here so say bishop e7 white can get good pressure with queen b3 there is remarkable compensation here for the uh, pawn sacrifice. Very, very interesting grob scenario. White well, has a small edge at least. And uh, it's to give up the d6 pawn here is uh, with knight e7, knight g e7. Uh, seems a bit suspect. Uh, White well, can just take there with an advantage growing there. Okay, so knight c6, h4, knight g e7 here, bishop g2, knight f5. Bishop f4, bishop e7, e3, black castles, a3, giving the idea that, hold on, white might not be castling kingside here. Uh, after bishop e6, queen c2, d5, rook d1, but not castling queenside either now, just pressure on that d file. Black commits with d4, we have white just casting queen c8, so now d takes is threatened e4 countering against the knight here on f5 d takes e takes bishop takes queen takes so it's still uh, a pawn down technically for white but white does seem to have nice pressure for the pawn bishop h3 knight e5 that unveils an attack against the bishop bishop takes g2 king takes knight takes bishop takes queen g4 check Bishop g3. It looks as though uh, black is doing absolutely fine here. Queen f3. Queen takes. King takes. So uh, can Magnus come back here? He is a pawn down. Uh, what could be very interesting in this position? Let's see. Rook f d8. Rook d e1. King f8. Rook e4 check and now actually very interesting decision king g4 so where is the king going has it got any prospects after king g4 rook ad8 and now a really nice maneuver bishop e5 making the queen side more solid and pointing at g7 and immediately for example bishop takes g7 might be a threat now with rook takes e7 to follow if king takes so we have f6 the bishop just drops back f6 did subtly weaken the light squares uh, so is there a possibility for the king to somehow go into black's position? Rook 8, d5, rook f4, pressure on f6 is mounting. Uh, white has to be careful here because black is threatening. If, for example, f4, black is threatening f5 check. So the king is uh, a little bit shaky at the moment, rook f4. h5 check, encouraging the king to go into the black position with this pawn sack. Uh, so there is the possibility of Ampersand that was uh, rejected here. In fact, Magnus just takes on h5 and we have king f7 and it looks slightly scary now for the white king. After rook e1, 
uh, this is looking pretty committal. It looks as though yeah, white might be having things like uh, g6 potentially. If white had played king g4, then f5 check. Uh, this position should be okay for white. Uh, so king king g4, uh, f5 is not working. If b6, rook h1, white uh, black rather should have a small edge there. So anyway. Uh, rook e1 here we have g6 encouraging the white king to go further into the position is this becoming truly uh, double-edged in fact this represents a critical moment in the game instead of the move g6 it seems here black has uh, a remarkable uh, idea with bishop d6 potentially so for example rook g4 uh, there's g6 check here and in this position can you guess what black could play if I give you five seconds starting from now which would show the slight controversy the slight double-edged nature of this king invasion black to play here could play what five seconds okay rook takes g5 yeah trying to wrench open this h file Threatening rook h5 checkmate. So for example, rook takes this bishop here, and that's that's good for black. This is just great for black. But otherwise, it's even more disastrous on this um, rook g4. Um, if um, here, after rook takes, if hd, then there's rook h3 check, and the king is really getting mated. So it is a little bit precarious, this whole plan. It has to be done with care, this kind of king walk. But here, you know, bishop d6, very accurate style move with that very interesting idea of g6 and rook takes g5. But it was missed, and, and after g6 check, it seems as though white's king might actually be reasonably okay here, believe it or not, under these circumstances. Because now there's always the possibility uh, if black tries something with the h file, there's always a possibility of rook takes and bishop takes, for example. Black tries bishop f8 check here. If bishop d6, as an example, then rook takes f6, that's no good. That's just going to be mating black. I uh, can't leave f6 here. Uh, and if f5, then rook takes here, crumbles black's position. That would be a very, very powerful exchange sacrifice indeed. With white having massive prospects to win there with all these past pawns massive position for white they're absolutely winning so uh, black plays bishop f8 check and we have king h7 and the interesting thing when you have kings in opposition uh, the escape squares are taken out for both kings in fact it's a mutual thing <laughs> they're taking out all of uh, both of each other's uh, escape squares uh, so that's that's an interesting thing this uh, stirring contest here between the kings uh, we have actually um, f5 being played and now a really nice move from Magnus intensifying the pressure greatly and <laughs> okay can you guess what white plays here okay h5 with the immediate threat of hg and that will be checkmate here if you can imagine this position the king hasn't really got any escape squares at all uh, so <laughs> hg is threatened we have rook h3 parrying that pinning the pawn but now uh the f kind of form pawn is installed h6 no i haven't got the form pawn t-shirt on I've got the greek gift t-shirt on today <laughs> uh, so h6 uh now we have rook d7 it looks as though this is a, a scary move for the white king in some respects. If um, b5, that might be a more moderate response here. Uh, as an example, alternative, this this position should be about even. This this kind of scenario could be about even. Yeah, a very tactical scenario could emerge like this, where black could get potential check as an example. But uh, this move, rook d7 carries with it a potentially fatal kind of what I would like to call weakness of the last move. Can you see what the weakness of the last move is? I what this last move kind of neglects. And 
I feel that always at the uh, faster time controls, even at you know GM level, weakness of the last move plays a crucial role, you know, role in winning games as opposed to long, deep strategic, you know, plans. Just simply weaknesses of the last move they invite things. So what has been invited by this move? If I give you five seconds to pause the video here, very very beautiful finish. Okay. Rook takes f5 check. Yes, that was the invitation. It's neglected f5 that last move, and that's tapped into that uh, tapped into that virtual invitation to take on f5 now, without being punished by rook takes f5. And the point is here that in this position a pawn has been liberated. So g6 is a juicy checkmate. I just couldn't resist. I had to show you this wonderful game. Uh, lovely king march, yes, but truly it was controversial. One has to be careful with such king marches. It's Steinitz that said the king is a fighting piece, but I'll be careful about being mated as well. In uh, if you aggressively plan to use your king, uh, so it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Yes, if you enjoyed this game video, then please click on the top left uh, the the uh, Bitly link for chess world. Uh, and also, there's a Magnus Carlsen playlist, Bitly. I've broken the rules slightly here. It's Magnus Carlsen Chess. Carlsen Chess was taken uh, by a news item. But Magnus Carlsen Chess is my playlist for Magnus Carlsen. Uh, but usually, it's just the surname Chess for my playlists, like Trojan Chess, Tau Chess. You know. So, But Magnus Carlsen Chess is the playlist. If you want to check out all my Magnus Carlsen videos, generally, I hope you do. Some of them are really good. I uh, try and pick out you know the beauties of certain games and I know this is only a bullet game but I still thought it was quite beautiful the finish I hope you do too okay thanks very much